Statistics and Excel, standard deviation and variance for a population, calories data. Get ready, taking a deep breath, holding it in for 10 seconds, looking forward to a smooth, soothing Excel. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, three tabs down below. Example, practice, blank, example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you could get right to the heart of the practice problem. Blank tab, blank worksheet, but with just our data in it so we can practice formatting the cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. If you don't have access to this data, it's a pretty long data set, so it would be difficult to simply type it in there. You can look at online resources for sample data sets, such as kaggle.com, K-A-G-G-L-E.com. Let's go to our example tab to get an idea of what we are doing. We're going to be looking at calories data, doing a similar kind of process that we have done in prior presentations, just working with different data sets now, in that we'll be doing our statistical calculations using mainly Excel functions. Then we'll do our histogram of the data, and then we'll break out in more detail, focusing in on the standard deviation and the variance of this data set. So let's go to the blank tab to the right. I'm going to remove the Kaggle. I'm going to format the entire sheet like we do pretty much every time. Putting my cursor on the triangle, right-clicking on those selected cells and formatting the cells. Let's go to the currency. Then negative numbers, we're going to make them red and bracketed. I don't want any dollar sign. We don't need any decimals. Let's remove those as well and OK. So let's embold the whole thing, home tab, or I will, you don't have to. Fonts group, bold it. I think that might make it easier for the screencast. Holding control, scrolling in a bit so we can see a little bit more detail. I'm currently at the 265 on the zoom in. Let's put a table around. Now note, by the way, that when I formatted the entire worksheet, it messed up the date field. So the date field is still there, but now I'm just going to reformat the date field to be a date. So I'm going to select column A and then go to the home tab, numbers group, dropping it down on the numbers. We want the short date and that should convert it back. Uh, hold on. That's normal date. I want the short date and I'm going to make this a little bit larger. There it is. Okay. So let's hold control and scroll down just a bit. <laughs> so now I'm currently at 220 on the zoom in. All right. Now I'm going to put my cursor in the data. And we're going to go to the insert tab up top, the tables, and then put a table around this data, the dancing ants doing their magic dance around the table, creating a table from it, allowing us then to sort the data by date, which is what it's currently sorted in, or if we wanted to by the calorie count, which we can go from lowest to highest. So we have the lowest calories here. Uh, on these dates where we didn't have any calories, we were like starved to death or just we didn't want to get out of bed those days or something. I don't know. And then we have the, the highest calorie counts from Z to A. All right. Taking that data, uh, let's make a skinny C column. That's what happens when you don't eat the calories. You get skinny and C. So you see what happens. You get skinny. So in any case, then let's do our normal calculations here. So we're going we're gonna to have the mean or average average uh, calculation and that's going to give us the truth about the calorie count uh, for us even if it's mean even if it's mean to do it it's the truth it's the facts just the facts here so then we're going to take the uh, let's take the minimum let's take the uh, q1 let's take the median 
median, which is, you could be called Q2. Let's take Q3. Let's take the max. And then we'll do the standard deviation, which is going to be for the population, we're going to say. And that's represented by a sigma. I won't put the sigma in here. But then we've got the variance uh, for the pop population, not your dad, but the, for a population versus a versus a sample because we're working with population stats for the most part at this time all right let's do it let's do our calculations i'm going to do this quickly because we've seen it in the past we're just doing it with this data set which is a fairly long uh data set here not that we'll do a little bit longer data set next time but you can see we have a pretty large sample and we can do our same calculations and the functions obviously quite helpful to get to the calculations quickly but it still can be useful to break out in like a table format what is actually happening because that's another way to sort the data another viewpoint at the data could that could give us more insight so let's say this is going to be equal to the average and i'm just going to say tab now to pick up the formula so there it is and then i'm just going to put my drop down arrow on the data the dancing ants around the data and enter so there's our average i'm going to do these fairly quick equals the min the smallest number tab to get the function my cursor's already in the section for the arrow drop down and there it is by the way if i want to look at the the min i can sort from lowest to highest and there's those zero days those zero days when we had no calories at all i was starving but whatever and then it's all for the cause man quartile let's do the quartiles and we'll say this one is going to be the quartile this one needs another argument a comma and we'll put a one next to it quartile one and then this is the median which could be quartile two formula or the median for function tab selecting the data there's the median and then equals quartile Number three, selecting the data, this needing another argument, therefore a comma, and quartile number three, the three next to it, and then the max when we maxed out on the calories. So the max, selecting the, oh, hold on a sec, something happened. This is the max, and I got to hit shift nine. I could do that to get my function ready to roll, and then selecting my data. So that's when we ate a whole bunch of calories apparently i don't know i was just drinking drinking bacon fat or something <laughs> I, I, anyway then we have the standard deviation on um, this one equals the standard and we're looking at the population data at this point let's take the standard deviation for the population p and select that and then this will be equal to the stand the variance for the population and we'll pick up that let's let's just do the same thing for the sample so just to pick those up if it were a sample standard deviation samp and variance variance for the samp and this is going to be equal to the standard deviation for a sample and this will be equal to the standard deviation for a i'm sorry this will be equal to the variance variance for a sample var dot s okay so there's all the stats did i get them right this time these are the population population this is for a sample versus uh, a sample if i look at this one by the way home tab number group uh and i add some decimals just to see uh, some a little bit of a, a differentiation between the two calculations all right let's put some blue borders around this i'm going to select our data and we'll go to the insert tab font group hit the bucket drop down if you don't have that blue it's in the more color in the wheel standard side and hitting that wheel and okay and then we'll go to the font drop down put some borders around this whole thing let's uh let's put a histogram in it now so let's take our data, the calorie data, insert tab up top, charts, and hit the drop down, but not too hard, don't break it, and then go to the histogram. So there we have it. 
So there's our data. It's fairly fairly centered data, a little bit you know skewed to the right here, but there's our pictorial format of the data. And so now let's do our standard deviation calculation uh, using and our variance using like a table format. So we get an idea of what's actually happening with those because they're a bit more complex calculations. So we've got the variance. Ver, ver, oh, hold on a sec. Variant, now I hit the cap lock. Variance, and I'm going to copy my formula over here. So there's the formula. I'll bring it down to like 12 on the font. Let's do 12 font. Now you can type in that formula, remember, with the insert tab, hit an, an equation, and then I would use the ink thing so that you can actually kind of type it in here or handwrite it in here, not type it in here, that's the point, and it'll start to do your formula up top. So I'm gonna make this one uh, orange as well, and we'll make this black and white up top for the header. Black and white. Okay, and then we're gonna say this is gonna be the standard deviation formula and we'll put that in place making that 12 on the font as well orange in it making it orange that is that's what we do that's what orange in it means when we orange it and so there it is okay so we we can see that these two are related of course because this this whole bit here for the variance sigma squared is the same thing as what's under uh, here on the standard deviation and then we're going to take the square root of it to get the standard deviation So let's do that calculation on more of a manual method Which although there's a whole lot of data points here is still pretty easy to do So let's just copy this whole thing I'm going to copy from column a to column B selecting those two columns right-clicking and copy and let's put them on over here in column R R and S R so we're going to say control V or just paste it. Let's make a skinny Q column, skinny Q. And then we'll just do our standard kind of thing here. So here's all of our individual points represented by X, X, I. So we're going to go from one all the way up to however many of them there are, N of them, that is. So we're going to say this is going to be the mean. So we're going to compare all of them to the mean. And if you're, if you're over the mean, we're going to be mean about it and say that you're getting fat because you're over, because <laughs> you had, you had more calories than the mean point, which, okay, that's not nice. So this is going to be equal to the average. Let's take the average of this. And then, so there's the middle point, the mean of our data set. And then we're going to take the difference differ difference and this is going to be equal to the calories that day versus the middle point the average and we're over on these days but of course we're under on the days way down here uh, because that is by definition the middle point and you would assume that we would be hovering somewhere around the middle point otherwise we would get amazingly large or amazingly skinny you would think uh if we were uh, on one side or the other for an extended period of time. So anyways, then we're going to take that squared. We're going to square that. So we, now we've done this bit and we're going to square them and then we will sum them up getting the numerator. So this equals the data point squared is a shift six, the caret to the power of two to the power of two. And there we have it. It's not quite as powerful as Grayskull to the power of Grayskull, whatever that means, but still, it's pretty effective. And then down below, let's put a total column and let's total this stuff up. I'm in my table, so I've got my table design up top. In the table style options, let's give ourselves a, a total column. And then over here on the calories, let's go ahead and just take the average. I'm going to recalculate the average just because we can. And then here, let's do a count so I can count them, meaning one, two, three, four, five on the line items. 
457 line items, which is a pretty fair amount of data, but so easy to do and work with in Excel because of the functionality that Excel provides us, right? If we sum it up, it should still add up to zero because we're taking the difference of every data point from the mean, the mean being in essence, that middle point. And then let's make this column a little bit wider so I can so I can see what the number is. We have a huge number because we squared everything, which got rid of the negative numbers, but still is now it's all squared. So let's take that and complete our variance calculation and the standard deviation. So the squared difference from the mean is basically what we have here or the numerator in essence of our formula for the variance formula. And then if we if we divide that this thing so I can put a divide uh, by the count, which is n in our formula, which we calculated here, the number of line items, 457 equals the 457. Let's put an underline under that font group underline. And then let's take the variance, variance. And just so we know the symbol is a sigma squared oftentimes represented as, let's go to the insert tab go into our Greek lettering so we can be cool with the Greek stuff and Greek and Coptic. And so then we have, I'm just, I have it in my favorites down here, but it's right there too. And then insert and then okay. And then I like to hit enter and then go back into it, then put a two, then hold down shift and select the two, or you could just select just the two, right click and then format the cell and make it a subscript so I can get that squared notation looking nice like that. Then we'll do the division problem. This equals this number divided by this number, the square difference of the mean divided by the number, the count gives us the variance. Then we want the standard deviation, standard deviation of the population, population, population of data. And we're gonna say that this is going to be then, the letter then would be sigma. Let's go to the insert tab, symbols, and add a sigma, because that's the cool thing to do. If you add those little symbols, people really think you know what you're talking about, tell you what, that's all you need to do, and people are people will, will say that your stuff is good, man. So this is gonna be the square root, square root of that, and so there's uh, the 815. If we add a couple decimals, home tab, number decimalizing it with a couple decimals. There we have it. That's not really a word. Some people get mad that I use it, but uh, I like to, I think it, it should be a word and it will be at some point uh, due to our use of it. So font group, if I hit the drop down here, let's make this blue and bordered. So there we have it. So this just another kind of example of us getting our calculation with a fairly long and different data set than, than the salaries. Uh, and remember that which a lot of times what you would be doing with different data sets is basically being able to compare, you know, the variance and the standard deviation of this data set possibly uh, to, re to related data sets. You know, if this was one population versus another population, and those will give you some ideas about the spread, some concepts that we'll get into in more detail uh, in future presentations. But that's the 81459, which we calculated over here as well. Uh, the 81559, uh, the, the 81459, and this was the <clears throat> for uh, the sample for the sample data.